You may be forgiven for thinking that the World War 1 era doesn't give many options in terms of weapons, but after doing some research I think you'll be quite surprised. I've spent the last couple of days browsing the darkest and dankest historical corners of the internet and I've learned that there is an abundance of weapons both used during the war and prototypes made around that era that could be added to Battlefield 1 in future DLCs. We know that there are already a couple of prototype weapons from the World War 1 period in the game such as the Hell Eagle, for example, so I think it's safe to assume that we'll be seeing plenty more of them in the future. So we now know that there will be 20 weapons added to the game, and that there are 4 future DLCs. That means that we are looking at 5 weapons per DLC if they share them out evenly. Of course these could be anything, they could be pistols, SMGs, LMGs, rifles, we don't really have any insight into that yet. So I thought that I would try and pick out some interesting weapons from the World War 1 era that we could potentially see in the game, or at least that maybe I would like to see in the game. There are so many that it's pretty hard to guess what will make it, but we can look at some of the cool weapons nonetheless. Now I've got to kick things off with the Tommy gun. Now I know what you're thinking, Jack, the Tommy gun, surely that's a World War II gun. Well, yeah, that's true, but it was made many years before and there were prototypes of it made during the First World War. Most notably, this Tommy gun made in 1917 called the Persuader and well, I mean look at that thing, it looks pretty badass. If you put it side by side with a World War II Tommy gun that we're more familiar with, you can see how similar they are in terms of the base design. Now some liberties will need to be taken here because although it was made in 1917, it was 1918 before the design issues had been resolved and the war ended two days before prototypes could be shipped to Europe. By all accounts, the weapon was never fully finished. I'm personally fine with that, as long as it's an era weapon, I think it would be fantastic to see an early prototype Tommy gun in the game. It looks fantastic, it has the Thompson name, I think this will be in the game and I'd put money on it. If you want to get a bit more lenient on the liberties, then the year later, Thompson released the Thompson Annihilator, and if you take a look at this, you can really see the Tommy gun that we know starting to take shape. Of course this design was finalised a year after the war finished, so could they really get away with adding that in? I'm not so sure, just a cheeky fact, Thompson sold these weapons for $200 at the time, adjusted for inflation, that's around $2,500 now. The Annihilator has a great name, it looks like what we think a Tommy gun should look like, but I think the Persuader will be the one that's used if any, because it fits the time period of World War 1 better. Now we know that the first DLC will cover the French army, so there has to be some French weapons in the game, right? Well during the First World War, the French army used a rifle called the Lebel Model 1886. Despite its uses though, it did have a significant design flaw. Its rounds were loaded in nose to tail in a magazine under the barrel. This meant that it had a very slow reload because the user had to be wary of around hitting the primer cartridge and it going boom, not exactly what you want in a rifle. And because of this defect, two years into the war the French Berthier was used as an improvement. Officially titled the Modèle 1907, it was clip loaded like the Lee Enfield. Unfortunately it had some issues, its magazine only held three rounds. Then in 1915 this was increased to 5, and finally in 1916 the Model 1916 was released with a 6 round clip or charger. I think this is most likely the version that we would see added into the game. There is also the Chaushat or Model 1915 CSRG for its full name. I think this is a dead certainty to be included because it was the standard LMG of the French army during World War 1. Named after its main contributor, Colonel Louis Chauchat, the Chauchat was one of the first light automatic rifle caliber weapons designed to be carried and fired by a single operator and an assistant, without a heavy tripod or a team of gunners. The muddy trenches exposed its weaknesses though and poor design alongside its heavy recoil, some experts have assessed it as the worst machine gun in history. Now thankfully in BF1 weapons aren't going to break so it's not all that bad and maybe we will see it in the game. So how about a Russian rifle then? We also know that the Russian army will be added at some point down the line so perhaps we may see the introduction of the Fedorov Aftermath M1916 automatic rifle. Only 3,200 rifles of these were manufactured between 1915 and 1924. 
The majority of them were made after 1920. It was, however, one of the first practical assault rifles. It certainly was a predecessor in a lot of ways for the automatic weapons that would follow. Okay, so this next one is a bit of a curveball. What if a future DLC covered Asian armies, perhaps Japan? Japan weren't a major player in the war, but they did have an important role in securing the sea lanes in the West Pacific and Indian Oceans against the Imperial German Navy. And how cool would a Japanese-inspired DLC be? The Murata was a Japanese bolt-action rifle inspired by European rifles adopted in 1880. It was the first indigenously produced Japanese service rifle. It had plenty of flaws though, and eventually it got a replacement. The Arasaka Type 30 rifle. Sounds pretty badass, doesn't it? The Arasaka would have lots of versions, but the one I think that could make it into the game could be the Arasaka Type 38 rifle. Now that's all well and good, but it's not particularly exciting, is it? So how about a Japanese sword? The Japanese Gunto was a military sword produced for and used by the Japanese army and navy after the end of the samurai era in 1868. Now I'm thinking that having a sword as a main weapon may be a bit odd, but what about for an elite class? We know that there are going to be new elite classes added into the game with the DLCs. We don't know how many, but we know that they're coming and when I was looking through some weapons, I came across some that I thought could be perfect for an elite class. Back to the sword then, imagine a Japanese samurai elite class. That would be something else. It could also be pretty tricky getting close to be able to use the sword without getting shot to pieces, but could be a pretty interesting concept and certainly stretching the artistic license that Battlefield 1 has on on offer. Next, let me introduce you to the Arbalet Sotorel Type A, or simply Sotorel, a bomb throwing crossbow. That's right, it throws bombs. If you watched my video from the Imperial War Museum back in July of this year, you'd have seen a real one of these in a cabinet. Used by the French and British forces on the Western Front during World War I, it was designed to throw hand grenades with a high trajectory into enemy trenches. It weighed 24 kilograms, which is obviously a lot to carry around, but it could throw an F1 grenade or a Mills bomb. Now I can definitely see an elite class walking around with one of these, considering that we already have a tank hunter, a machine gun and an SMG. If you consider the Via Perosa and Flamethrower, I think it would definitely fit in quite well. Okay, so we know that sniping is a ton of fun in Battlefield 1, but what about a sniper elite class as well? Maybe a bit too much? Possibly, but there were such things as massive elephant guns in World War 1, insanely large rifles used for large game hunting. And the tank hunter kind of fits this role, but it doesn't have that long range scope. During the First World War, both the British and German forces deployed elephant guns obtained from African colonies to break the stalemate in the trenches. The British army needed them as a way to counter the German army using snipers advancing under the cover of large thick steel plates. So can you imagine a sniper elite class? Could it be a bit too overpowered? I'm not sure, but I'd love to see a proper elephant gun in the game. Okay then, so for the most part, those are some of the weapons and gadgets that we may actually see in Battlefield 1 DLC down the line. I think a lot of them make sense in terms of gameplay and the classes available. And I also think that it's going to be very interesting though to see if DICE decide to break the current class model in terms of what type of weapons each class gets. Could we see a medic down the line with a low power SMG for example? Something like that would really change up the type of gameplay you can have with that class or perhaps a bolt action rifle on the assault class. Maybe, but I think then that would kind of defeat the purpose of the scout class. Or how about a weapon that's available on all of the classes? Typically they don't do that though in many of the Battlefield games, historically speaking, especially in dice games, but we did see some all class weapons in Hardline, remember, but I feel if a primary weapon is available on all classes it will always have to be just a bit worse than every other exclusive weapon in that class, otherwise I think that you start straying into overpowered territory and balance then becomes even harder. Now if you want to take a look at exactly how many weapons roughly were around and used during World War One, there's an absolutely staggering list of them on everyone's favourite source of reliable information, Wikipedia. This particular page has 23 different armies on it that fought in the war and if you scroll down you can really see the epic scale of what was on offer here. And for someone who didn't really know much about World War I until BF1 was announced and I started researching it a lot, it's really a big surprise and I bet the weapon designers at DICE will have an absolute field day picking from this bunch. 
Either way, do let me know down in the comments below which weapons or gadgets of World War I you think will make it into future DLC and perhaps what classes they would be best suited to. And just one final reminder for you guys, my limited edition ugly Christmas sweater is actually on sale for like another few hours after I release this video. So if you want one, go and snap it up as soon as possible because after it's gone, it's going to be gone for good. You can find that over at bit.ly slash jackfragsxmas and I've also linked that down in the description below. If you enjoyed the video guys, do give me a thumbs up. That would be amazing. If you didn't, a thumbs down and I'll see you in the next one.